In this video, we're going to talk about elementary operations. Now, our goal here is to be able to solve a system of equations where you have three equations and three unknowns, or maybe even four equations and four unknowns or, or more. And the question is, how do you do that? Well, two systems of equations are said to be equivalent if they have the same solutions. Okay, now if you remember from the previous video, uh, I asked, how would you solve a system of equations like this? How could you do this? And let me just say, it's really a multi-step process. It's not some quick, simple little thing that you see the answer in three seconds. It, it's definitely a process that takes a little bit of work and a little bit of time. But I noticed though that uh, it's much easier if you have a system like this. If you're missing the x term in your second equation and the x and the y in your third equation, it's much simpler. You can just use back substitution. Okay, so our goal really is to be able to take a system of equations like this that's more complicated and be able to transform it into an equivalent system where you're missing the x here and you're missing the x and the y here. Okay, an equivalent system in the sense that it has the same solution. So how do we do that? Well, we can use what are called elementary operations to transform a system of equations into an equivalent one. Okay, so what are the elementary operations? There's three elementary operations uh, that can be used to transform a system of equations uh, into an equivalent one. The first thing you can do is you can always interchange any two equations in the system. Okay, and let's just take uh, do an example of this. It doesn't matter what order you write the equations in. For example, I could have written that middle equation here on the top. Okay, x minus 3y minus z is equal to negative 10. And then the, the top equation in the middle. So basically I interchanged the first and the second equations and I'll keep the, the third equation the same. Well, of course, doing this is not going to affect the solution. Okay, the same x, y, and z that, that are, is a solution for this system of equations will also be a solution here. So they're equivalent systems. So what I've done here, so I, can, I usually write it like this, I've done equation one, so eq1, and I usually put a little double arrow to uh, indicate that I'm fl flipping these two equations. Equation one and equation two have been flipped. Okay, so that's that's an elementary operation, uh, interchanging any two equations. You, you're not going to affect the solution. The second thing that you can do is you can multiply an equation in the system by a constant. Okay, now the constant can't be zero, but you can multiply by a constant. For example, I could take this uh, system of equations and transform it into a new one by multiplying, let's say, let's multiply uh, this middle uh, equation by uh, four. So let's do four times equation number uh, two, and let's let that be our new equation two. Okay, so I do four times equation two, and that's going to be our new equation two. I draw a little arrow. So I'm not changing the first equation uh, or the last equation. Those are staying the same. but I am just doing four times this middle one. Now I have to do four times everything on both sides of the equation. So I can rewrite this as 4x minus 12y minus 4z is equal to negative 40, right? I just multiplied each of these terms by four. Okay, now doing that is not going to affect the solution. Okay, so this system over here is equivalent to the original one. Okay, because um, you're just multiplied an equation by a constant. Okay, now the third one is the one probably that we use the most, but it's also maybe kind of the most, um, one that involves the most work. Basically, you, you replace, you're allowed to replace an equation in the system by the sum of itself and a constant multiple of another equation. Okay, so what we can do for example, we could replace this last equation by minus 5 times the middle equation plus the last equation. Okay, so in other words, what I'm going to do is do minus 5 times equation 2, minus 5 times equation 2 plus equation 3. Okay, so I'm taking, and, and we're going to get a new equation 3. Okay, so I'm replacing the last equation by the sum of itself, right, equation 3, so the sum means plus, and a constant, in this case the constant is minus 5 times equation 2. Now why would I want to do that? Well, you'll see what's going to happen when we do this. Now notice I'm not getting a new first equation, 
and I'm not getting a new second equation. Even though I'm doing minus 5 times the second equation, I'm not replacing the second equation. I'm, getting, I'm keeping the second equation the same. Okay, that's important. Some people get a little confused with that. I th they say, I thought we were multiplying the second equation by minus 5. Well, the only equation we we're replacing is the third equation. So what we have to do is do minus 5 times that this middle equation, right, equation 2, plus the, the last equation, okay, which is 5x plus 11y minus 8z is equal to minus 44. Okay, so how, how do we add two equations? Well, we can think of minus 5 times the first equation is really minus 5x plus 15y plus 5z is equal to 50. Okay, do you see what I did? I took every term in that first equation. In fact, maybe don't, don't even think about all this right here that I've just done. Okay, just do minus 5 times that middle equation. Okay, and now let's add to it the last equation. Okay, the last equation is this. Okay, and what we do when we get this is notice we, we can add vertically here. We have minus 5x plus 5x, that's 0x. Okay, so that's really gone. We have a 15y plus an 11y, that's a 26y. And we have a 5z minus 8z, that's a negative 3z. And a 15 plus a minus 44, that's 6. Okay, so what we have is 26y minus 3z is equal to 6. Okay, so notice we've replaced the third equation by the sum of itself and a constant multiple of another equation. Okay, we've done minus 5 times that middle equation and added it to the last equation to get a new third equation. Notice what's nice about this third equation is we're missing the x term. In fact, I strategically chose that minus 5. I could have chosen anything I wanted to, but I chose minus 5 because I knew when I multiplied by minus 5, I'd have minus 5x and then plus a 5x would give me 0. In fact, usually I do this without writing this bottom part here. I just do minus 5 times, the, times this plus this. So you have minus 5x plus 5x, that's 0. Minus 5 times negative 3y is 15y, positive 15y, plus 11y, that'd be 26y. Okay, then minus 5 times uh, minus z would be positive 5 plus a negative 8z, that's negative 3z. And finally, minus 5 times minus 10 is positive 50, and 50 minus 44 is 6. Okay, so this system over here is equivalent to the original one, has the same solution. Okay, so in the next uh, video, we're going we're gonna to actually solve a system of equations like this. And what we're going to do is begin with the system and use these three elementary operations to convert it to an equivalent system where we're missing the x term here and the x's and y terms here. Okay, so we'll talk about that in the next video.